Well, here's a scary statistic. Did you know that more than half of all people will have an STD or an STI at some point in their lifetime? But why are sexually transmitted diseases on the rise? Well, joining us via Skype with some insight is board certified OBGYN, Dr. Perry Goodsey. Hi, Dr. Perry, how are you? Good, how are you doing today? I'm doing terrific, thank you for asking and thank you for being on the show. Um, yeah, I have some I real good topics to talk about, so let's get right to it. Um, STDs, they're on the rise. Um, tell us why. So, you know, why we don't know, we have some theories, but the important thing to note is that they are definitely on the rise. Um, the CDC actually came out with a new report, 2014, that said that gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis were all on the rise. And this has been gradually um, growing since about 2002. And so we really need to kind of stop and think about why is this and what can we do to prevent it? Hmm. And how many cases have you seen per year so far? Myself personally, you know, I'm in private practice and so it is, it varies upon where you are location wise. So I don't really have a number to quantify that. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the CDC report, I mean, we're talking millions. So it's, it's really something that needs to be given attention. Okay. Is there a specific uh, group of people that you're seeing arise more than the others or? Yes, and that's what actually is alarming. In general, we usually see gonorrhea and chlamydia is more popular in age group of, of 18 to 25, you know, that college kind of age group. And unfortunately, this is where we're actually seeing the rise as well. It's amongst young people, which in some ways makes sense because a lot of times those are going to be the people that are, you know, experiencing sex for the first time, having multiple sexual partners. But in a way, it doesn't make sense because those are also the people that we typically say uh, being more educated, especially around this generation. They have the access to the knowledge um, through the Internet and school. A lot of times people are talking about it more. So why is this? Mm. Are you seeing this also in your practice more frequently? I definitely am. I definitely do see more um, college-aged women, women in their 20s coming in more with the with these STDs than perhaps I was even seeing, you know, five years ago. Mm. So what can we do to, um, you know, take, take a, a, pro a proactive approach to this measure? Well, I think number one is going to be education and, and even having the conversation that we're having today. You know, a lot of times these are subjects that we're not talking about. We're not talking about liberally um, in the media or even amongst ourselves. So I think that's number one is awareness. Right. And I think number two is um, really, you know, also having people encouraging them to talk about it. People need to be talking to their sexual partners about have you ever been exposed to an STD? And then, of course, practicing safe sex as well. Right. And how can this affect future generations? Like if we don't take care of this issue right now, how bad is it going to get down the road? Yeah. And this is a very, that's a great question because the thing is, is that people don't realize these STIs or STDs, whichever phrase you want to use, they can affect future fertility. Okay. So if you were to get as a woman gonorrhea or chlamydia, you could get a pelvic infection that eventually could lead to fertility issues. And so as you can see, if this was something that became, could continue to grow, became rampant, it really could affect future populations in terms of numbers. Hmm. Right, so it can really get out of hand then, right? Am I assuming? Exactly. Wow. So what, what are some things that you would uh, advise our viewers, some tips that you can give to people so they can they be a little more proactive about the approach? I think number one, obviously, always, you know, practicing safe sex. A lot of times people have the misconception that if they are on some sort of birth control, then they don't need to worry about using a condom. And that, of course, is not true. Birth control does not protect you against STDs. And so no matter what is important to, you know, protect yourself. The other thing is that a lot of these um, infections don't cause symptoms. You can go unnoticed with chlamydia, gonorrhea, even herpes sometimes can't show up immediately. So if you have sex with a new partner, you need to see the doctor. We have a tendency in general in our culture to wait to go to the doctor until we think something's wrong. And that's why in this case, you just can't do that. You, if you have sex with a new person, or if you're having sex with someone that you don't necessarily trust, that you're the only person, you need to be going and you need to be getting sexually um, transmitted disease checks from your doctor. Wow, that's, that's great. That's great information, Dr. Perry. I, I wish we had a little more time. 
But quickly, your website where people can just go get in some more information. Yes, so I'm at drperry.com, and mm -hmm. it's P-A-R-I. And you can find me there. You can find links to my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, so you can get some more info. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Perry. Thanks for being on the show, and take care, all right? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good okay. day. Okay, you too. And still to come, Botox, fillers, lipo. It's all the craze, but why and how safe is it? Find out when Healthy Lifestyle returns in just a moment.